the Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you'll love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is. P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Well, let's see what's doing with the great Gildersleeve. It's the morning before Thanksgiving. There's a white blanket on the ground, a brown turkey in the oven... And our rotund water commissioner is in a holiday mood. Up and at him, Leroy. Time for breakfast. Okay, Uncle. Wait till I tie my shoelace. Well, hurry up. Time and untied shoelaces wait for no man. Well, not bad before breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Mort? Yes, Marjorie? Uncle Mort, just look at my hair. My goodness. Is that your hair? What happened to it? I shampooed it, and there isn't enough water to rinse the soap out. Oh, well, I have noticed the pressure's down a little. I wanted to look pretty for the Thanksgiving game tomorrow. What's wrong with the pressure? Yeah, it was so low last night, I couldn't even take my bath. <laughs> Leroy, let's not say that like it's the only thing you have to be thankful for. Well, you just have to do something about it, Unky. Uh, I'll call Charlie Anderson at the reservoir as soon as I get to the office. But the soap's drying. How will I wash it out? Why do you want to wash the soap out, Marge? It looks better all gooed up. <laughs> Quiet, you. Which one has the soap such Tony? <laughs> oh, shut up. Now, Leroy, I'll look into it, my dear. Oh, please do. Oh, oh, my goodness. Nobody seems to realize how busy I've been lately. Engaged to Adeline and Leela at the same time. And trying to get disengaged from Leela. I've been a busy man. I'll say. Leroy, your opinion has not been solicited. Okay. Water pressure's pretty bad, though, huh, Unc? I don't want to hear any more about it from anybody. Uh, pass the toast. Sure. Morning, Mr. Gillespie, Leroy. Hi. Morning, Bertie. How are you this morning? I'm okay, but the water's sure low. Yeah, oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes, and with all this cooking for Thanksgiving, we need a lot of water. I know, Bertie. You sure is throwing up things in the kitchen. I understand that, Bertie. I turned on the faucet full force this morning. All I got was trickle, trickle, trickle. Yeah. I'll take good care of it, Bertie, believe me. That's good, because yesterday I got a big trickle. Today, just a little trickle. Who knows what kind of trickle I'm going to get tomorrow? Yeah, just leave everything to me, Bertie, and don't worry. Oh, I ain't going to worry. Working for the Water Commission, it'd be silly to worry about water. Well, I'm glad that's settled. You sure is throwing up things in the kitchen. Trickle, trickle, trickle. <laughs> Sounds like a complaint. Eh, these things should be handled through the office, not at the breakfast table. Hey, Unc, it's Thanksgiving vacation. Can I go down to the office with you? Leroy, why do you want to go down to the office? Oh, gosh, Craig's got a cold and Piggy's got the measles. I don't have anybody healthy to play with. <laughs> Leroy, the pressure's down and I'm going to be busy. Well, that's why I want to go. How's a little kid going to learn anything if he doesn't learn it from his uncle? What? I want to see how you handle those big problems. Well, it is something to see. <laughs> sure, like you say, it's time I knew how to do things. I'm not going to be in school forever. I wouldn't be too sure about that, Leroy. <laughs> well, I guess you can come along. Oh, boy. <laughs> Swell of you to let me come to the office, Uncle. You won't enjoy it, Leroy. People will be calling me all morning to ask about the water. What makes water pressure go up and down, Unc? Well, Leroy, it could be any one of a number of things. Like what? Well, uh, perhaps the snifter valve isn't working or something. What does a snifter valve do? What does it do? Well, that's sort of 
top drawer information, Leroy. You tell too many people what a snifter valve does, and pretty soon everybody has a water plant of his own. Gosh, you have to know a lot to be a water commissioner, don't you, Uncle? Well, you can't be a dunderhead. The door's locked. Where is that Bessie? What a secretary. Can't even remember to come to work. Last night you said you gave her the weekend off. Oh, yes. Bessie's going over the river and through the woods to her grandmother's house for Thanksgiving. Here, I'll pick up your mail and newspaper off the floor, Unc. Yeah, just give me the newspaper, Leroy. Those letters with those little windows don't look very important from here. Here you are. Hey, Unc, since Bessie isn't here, can I be your secretary and answer phone calls? Well, I guess it won't do any harm. Gee, thanks, Unc. And let me know if you want me to take a letter, Mr. Commissioner Gildersleeve. I'll be right in with my pad and pencil. Yeah, just answer the phone, my boy. If there are any complaints, tell them I'll call them back. Who came in? Uh, oh, the judge. Hello, Gildy. Greetings of the season. Yeah, hello, Judge. And Leroy, felicitations. Hi. Felicitations. Care to have a chair, Judge? I'm Bessie this morning. Thank you, Leroy. You make a very handsome Bessie. Ah. Uh... Oh, brother. <laughs> And now, if you don't mind, Bessie, I'd like to have a word with the commissioner about the water situation. What? You too, Hooker? Leroy, step into the outer office. Oh, for corn's sake. Leroy. But, Uncle, I'm your secretary. I get to hear these things like Bessie does. Well, here's a quarter. Go get a malt like Bessie does. Gee, thanks. So long, Uncle. Judge, you take the phone calls. You can be Bessie till I get back. <laughs> All right, Leroy. I'm Bessie. Bessie. Look more like Bessie's grandmother. <laughs> or the wolf. <laughs> Close the door, Leroy. Gilda, you seen this morning's paper? What do you mean? Let me read you this editorial. Huh? Quote, what has happened to Summerfield's water pressure? Citizens ask Mayor Terwilliger for answer. Citizens? Oh, for him. Is the slow trickle out of water faucets due to big drip in water department? Oh. <laughs> Let me see that. Wait a minute, Gilda, wait a minute. Look at this cartoon on the next page. It's a picture of you and the mayor. It is? Dressed up like Jack and Jill, carrying a water pail. Give me that paper up. Well, does look a little like me at that. I'm not quite that fat around the knees, but... What does it say? Jack and Jill are going over the hill if they don't fetch a pail of water. <laughs> not very far from the truth, Gildy. Has the mayor called you yet? Well, no. I guess I'd better go see him, Judge, and beat him to the punch. I'd do it right away, Gildy, without a moment's delay. Quit rushing me, Horace. Just trying to build a fire under you, Gildy. Now it's up to you to get enough water to put it out. Happy Thanksgiving! <laughs> Be careful of that gobble hooker. Everybody doesn't have his turkey yet. <laughs> uh, what'll I tell the mayor? Better call Charlie Anderson and find out. I always hate to call Charlie when there's trouble. He's such a cantankerous old looster. Hello, Summerfield Reservoir speaking. Jerry Nichols, start talking. Charlie, Commissioner Gildersleeve. Charlie, have you read the paper this morning about the water pressure being down? I don't have to read the dad blasted paper to know that, Commissioner. I'm on the job. Yeah. Charlie, let's show a little respect. What's the matter with the water pressure? We're going dry, that's what's the matter. Water's so low in the reservoir, every time a duck lands, he scrapes his fuselage on the bottom. <laughs> this is no time for jokes. Well, it ain't the problem the paper's painted to be, Commissioner. All you got to do is drive up the hills and open the floodgates of the storage reservoir. Oh, yes, yeah, storage reservoir. You know we got one, don't you? You're the water, Commissioner. Says here in fine print. No, Charlie. <laughs> you better give me some water down here, Commissioner. Your name's going to be mud. Like the bottom of the reservoir. Watch it, Charlie. Let's get on the ball, Commissioner. He hung up. <laughs> uh, shouldn't have called him in the first place. Fine day you picked to come to the office with me, Leroy. Everything's gone wrong. This is fun. What are you going to tell the mayor, Unc? Well, uh, the water commissioner's figured out a plan already. Don't you worry. You wait here in the mayor's reception room, my boy. Hey, magazines, just like a dentist's office. Yeah, they're older, Leroy. Terwilliger's been in office a long time. Oh, Democrat. 
little Leroy. <laughs> that you out there, Gildersleeve? Uh, oh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Thought I'd drop in for a little chat about things. <laughs> Who came in with you? A uh, little nephew, Leroy. Oh. Gildersleeve, that cartoon in this morning's paper was very embarrassing to me. Very embarrassing. Well, let's not take it too hard, Mr. Mayor. Why, just look at this, Gildersleeve. You as Jack and me, the mayor, made up like Jill with a dress on. Well, I'm in knee pants. What? <laughs> Gildersleeve, this is bad publicity. It's so humiliating, I'm going to take charge of this water situation myself. Now, Mr. Mayor, that won't be necessary. All I have to do is drive up to the storage reservoir and release more water. That'll take care of the situation. Naturally. Any dunderhead knows that. Yeah. But it won't answer the press, Gildersleeve. We've got to do something spectacular, something dramatic, something that will make headlines for the city water department. I could go up there on snowshoes. <laughs> no, Gildersleeve. I have a real stunt in mind, and I'm going to handle it personally. But Mr. Mayor, I'm the water commissioner. Uh, yes. yes. Water is my responsibility, and I insist upon meeting my responsibilities. No, Gildersleeve, this is quite a daring plan. It calls for a lot of nerve. Well, if there's anything I've got, it's nerve. <laughs> and I'm willing to do anything for the good of the water department. Mm, very well, then, if you insist. I insist. Splendid spirit, Gildersleeve. Under the circumstances, I think you deserve the limelight. Well, that's very nice of you. So you can fly up there in the helicopter. Uh, helicopter? <laughs> yes, I've hired one to come over here from the Hub City Airport. You and Charlie Anderson will take off tomorrow morning at 7 for the upper reservoir. But, Mr. Mayor, is this trip necessary? I mean, in a helicopter. Oh, they're getting a lot of publicity, Gildersleeve. Landing on buildings, delivering mail, doing stunts. Stunts? But, Mr. Mayor... Hey, you okay, boy! In a helicopter? Oh, boy, Keen. I don't know, Leroy. I'm not sure I know much about them. Why, you've seen them, Gildersleeve? Those planes with two propellers? Yeah, no wings. No wings? Oh, yeah. They're swell. Huh? Can I go along with you? Mm, I'm afraid there won't be room, Leroy. Come to think of it, I hate to have you miss this trip, Mr. Mayor. You sure you don't want to reconsider and go up in my place? No, Gildersleeve. The newspapers will make a lot of your flying over the reservoir. You'll make a big splash. That's what I'm afraid of. The great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Well, hello, Bertie. Hello, Mr. Wall. Everything all set for Thanksgiving Day dinner? Yes, sir. You ought to see how I'm going to fix that turkey. Mm-mm, bet it'll be good. Going to have parquet and biscuits? Sure am. And that turkey... The nice part is, with parquet, you can be sure the spread you use is just as nourishing as it is delicious. Going to use scads of parquet on my mashed potatoes, too. And about that big roast turkey... Sure, parquet's wonderful on potatoes as well as biscuits. After all, it's prepared like a rare luxury food from selected products of American farms. And you can pile it on those potatoes because it costs only about half as much as the most expensive spreads. Mr. Wall, there's something I want to say about basting that turkey. Basting the turkey? Oh, I thought we were talking about tasting parquet. I'm talking about good tasting basting, that's what. I'm saying that turkey's going to be good tasting because of the basting I give it with parquet. Oh, I get it. I'm saying it don't make no difference how you use parquet because it tastes so good. Tastes like it should cost twice as much. Well, friends, why not put parquet on your table? That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, the margarine made by Kraft, that tastes like it should cost twice as much. Good taste in every which way, based in all biscuits. Now let's return to the great Gildersleeve. The man who's never been higher off the ground than when he got a hot foot at the Jolly Boys Club is slated to go up in a helicopter tomorrow morning. No wings, eh? Of course, Marjorie, if you children don't want me to go. What? My first obligation is to my little family, not to the water department. A lot of families feel funny about their breadwinners going up in the air. Oh, I think it's wonderful, Unky. You do? Uh... Of course, some families don't care what happens to their breadwinners, I guess. Unky, don't be silly. We love you dearly. I don't know. If helicopters weren't so safe, we'd never let you go up. Besides, we want to see your picture in the paper. Oh, yeah, big splash. <laughs> What's that noise? 
sounds like a plane. Hey, you come on outside. It's your helicopter. Oh, didn't think they were flying it over here until tomorrow. Oh, let's go out and see it, Unky. Yeah, I guess I better go out and have a look at it. Look, Unky, it's just hanging there right over the street. Leroy, don't stand under it. Okay. And put that slingshot away. <laughs> you come up here on the porch. Look, Unky, he's banking sideways, standing right up on his tail. Oh, look at him. Isn't that breathtaking? Silly daredevil. Look, he's waving down at somebody. Oh, Marjorie, you go inside. Oh, Unky. Uh, that fresh show off. The idea. And to think I have to go up with that maniac. What's going on out here, Miss Gill, please? Just watching the helicopter, Bertie. Hey, who? Yeah. <laughs> helicopter. Oh, what's that thing doing around here? Has the Cold War got hot? <laughs> no, Bertie. That's the plane Unky and Mr. Anderson are going up in tomorrow. Hey, look at it go. I'm going to chase it. Sir. You going up in that thing, Miss Gill, please? Well, I'm considering it. You must be a brave man. You wouldn't catch Bertie stepping into that thing, no, sir. Nothing to worry about, Bertie. Looks safe, doesn't it? Safe? What happened to the wings, Mr. Gilsey? They fall off? <laughs> no, Bertie, that's the way it's built. No wings. Then what holds it up? Well, that big propeller holds it up. Oh, so that's what that thing's for. Looks like an egg beater gone crazy. <laughs> now, Bertie, it's not that flimsy. I don't think. You wouldn't catch Bertie risking her life limb in pursuit of happiness in that thing, no, sir. It's not that bad, Bertie. Mr. Gillsleeve, what do I do with your turkey dinner if you don't get back? Bertie! <laughs> it's time to eat it, I mean. Uh, just save me the wings, Bertie. <laughs> Fine Thanksgiving tomorrow's gonna be. I think I'll stop in and get a Thanksgiving cigar and smoke it tonight. Hello, PV. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this afternoon? Give me a cigar, PV. Your customary brand, El Lobo? No, not today. Give me a Havana. Well, the festive type cigar. I imagine you're having a big turkey at your house tomorrow, huh? Oh, yeah, big turkey. Well, uh, Mrs. Peavy and I thought we'd stuff a small duck. Oh? We don't particularly care for turkey, so when Thanksgiving comes around, we always duck the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> duck, turkey, that was a little witticism, Mr. Gilbertson. That was a very little witticism, Peavy. And I'm in no mood for it. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Gillespie. You do seem a little out of sorts. Yeah. Care to have a Coke on the house? Uh, thanks, Peavy. Yes, I am a little upset. Excuse me. The mayor wants Charlie Anderson and me to go up in the hills to the storage reservoir tomorrow to release some water. Have to get the pressure up. Oh. Well, I didn't want to complain, Mr. Gillespie, but I've noticed that the fountain, all I get on fizz drinks is fizz. <laughs> Now, we'll take care of it, Peavy, if all goes well with the helicopter. How's that? That's the way we're going up there. How do you feel about helicopters, Peavy? Well, I was reading about them in a magazine just the other day. Said the average U.S. housewife can fly one. Well, that may be, but I'm not the average U.S. housewife. <laughs> no, I guess you're not. <laughs> I've never been up in the air, Peavy. I'm not so sure I want to leave the ground. Oh, you'll come back to it, all right. <laughs> There's the old saying, all that goes up must come down. Oh. Law of gravity. I'm aware of gravity. That's what bothers me. Why, flying up there should be an exhilarating experience. Like the song goes, <laughs> off we go into the wild blue yonder. TV. <laughs> You seem to think this is nothing but a lark. I suppose you'd grab at the chance to fly up there. No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah, just as I thought. Well, I don't know if I could stand the altitude, huh? I'm not a young man anymore. Evie, you're no older than Charlie Anderson, and he's going up. Say, maybe Charlie Anderson shouldn't try to stand that altitude either. And if the engineer can't go, there's no use in me going. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Peavy, I'm going out and see Charlie Anderson. Yeah, wait a minute, Mr. Gildersleeve. We forgot to drink our Cokes. Oh, yes. Well, bottoms up. I- I'd like to propose a toast. Oh? As we lift our Cokes on high, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we may... Oh, put me on <laughs> So, Charlie, as you know, I've always prided myself on thinking of my employees first. I don't think you should go. Of course, if you don't go, I won't get to go either. But, Commissioner, I want to go. You're an old man, Charlie. What if something happens? I've lived my three score and ten. I kind of hope something does. (laughs) Charlie, don't say that. At your age, you don't dare take chances. You'll be surprised some of the chances I've taken in my young life, Commissioner. (laughs) Oh, you kid. All right, Charlie. Could it be, Commissioner, you're a little uh, afraid to go up? Charlie. Of course, I can understand why. It'd be pretty hard to get you off the ground with all that ballast you carry. <laughs> all right, Charlie, I'll see you out there at 7 o'clock. We'll see who's afraid. No wings, eh? At 7 o'clock in the morning... Hate to go up at that hour. Hate to get up at that hour. <sighs> Wonder what Adeline will think about this trip. She has something to lose, too. Say, maybe she'll try to talk me out of it. And the mayor can't blame a man if his wife to be won't let him go. <laughs> You're sly, Gildersleeve. Well, hello, Throckmorton. Hello, Adeline. Come in, lover boy. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, just think, Throckmorton. It won't be long now. Huh? Until we'll be married, and you won't have to ring the doorbell to come in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Adeline, when you come over tomorrow for Thanksgiving, I want you to promise you'll enjoy the dinner, even though I may not be there. Why won't you be there, Throckmorton? Well, I'm going on an expedition for the water department. An emergency has arisen. Oh, I read what they said about you in the water department in this morning's paper, and I resent it. Well, I'll make them eat their words if it kills me. Did you hear what I said, Adeline? What? I said if it kills me. Good, Throckmorton. I'm all for you. What? (laughs) But, Adeline, you don't understand. I'm flying to the upper reservoir. You're flying up there? In a helicopter. First thing in the morning. Good gracious. Have you thought of the danger involved? Well, no, but I thought you might. Oh, you have responsibilities, Throckmorton. Well, yes, there's Marjorie and Leroy. But you know how children are. They never think of the future. Well, I'm thinking of my future. And let's not forget that sweet little baby we're going to adopt. I know, Adeline. But it's my job and my duty. I must go up. Oh, Throckmorton. I know you don't want me to go, but I'll be back. I'm pretty sure of it. Oh, you're so brave, Throckmorton. You sound just like my grandfather Bedford Devereaux when he stepped into the basket of that balloon. Balloon? He told Grandmother Devereaux he'd be back for lunch, and he didn't show up until supper two weeks later. (laughs) Of course, Adeline, if you don't want me to go, I won't. What? I shouldn't just think about my duties at the water department. It isn't fair to you and the little baby. But, Throckmorton, I want you to go. Huh? I'll make the sacrifice. You will. But, Adeline... A good woman should never keep a man from doing his duty. I'd rather have a deep respect for your memory. my little helicopter warming up. Still no wings. Well, good morning, Gildersleeve. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mayor. I see you're here on the dot. Seven o'clock. Well, I could have been here at five. I was awake. <laughs> Where's Charlie Anderson? Oh, he'll be along. Uh, come over here, Gildersleeve. I want you to meet your pilot. Pilot? Oh, yes. I've seen him in action. Uh, Mr. Clark, this is Water Commissioner Gildersleeve. Glad to meet you, Mr. Gildersleeve. How do you do? Makes a lot of noise, don't it? <laughs> Oh, 
What happened? The motor cut out. It's a little cold this morning. I wonder what'll happen up there where it's really cold. Well, uh, don't start it again until we've had our pictures taken for the press, Mr. Clark. Right. Uh, Gildersleeve, you stand on that side, and I'll stand over here with my arm around the pilot. Yeah, all right. Uh, take about five of them, boys. That's why we're doing this, isn't it, Gildersleeve? Oh, yes, that's why we're doing it. <laughs> Say, Clark, you're a little young, aren't you? Young? I'm 21. 21? Oh, you've got nothing to worry about, Commissioner. I can turn one of these hot rod spiders inside out. Well, don't do it while I'm up there. <laughs> Besides, if anyone should be nervous, I should. Huh? Of course, I've flown a lot of freight, but you're my first human passenger. I am? Uh, what's going on there, Gildersleeve? Smile for the camera. Oh, yes, yeah. smile. I'll try. <laughs> Hold the camera! Hold the camera! You've got to get the engineer in them pictures. Well, here's Charlie. Oh, what's the matter, Commissioner? You look a little white around the gills. Gills? Oh, I'll be all right, Charlie. I think I'll step over to the fountain and get a drink of water before we take off. Hey, Commissioner, don't turn on the water. Charlie, my mouth's dry. I have to have a drink. It may be my last. Oh! Right in the face! Charlie, what's happened to the water pressure? That's more than we ever had. Dad, blast it, Commissioner. Why'd you have to go and spoil everything? What's that, Charlie? We got so low on water last night, I hiked up there and opened the gates. You mean the pressure's up? Charlie, why didn't you tell me before? What, miss a trip in this newfangled helicopter? Think I'm crazy? Yes. Hey, you hear that, Mr. Mayor? The pressure's up. We don't have to go. What's this, Gildersleeve? Yeah. But let's take some more pictures, this time with my arm around the pilot. <laughs> One taste of crisp toast topped with parquet margarine, and you'll be convinced that this margarine is prepared like a rare luxury food. For parquet tastes like a luxury. It's delicious on rolls, pancakes, crackers, as well as bread. It's nutritious and economical. Though parquet costs only about half as much as the most costly spreads, it gives you all their nourishment, plus 15,000 units of vitamin A. Tomorrow, get parquet, the margarine that tastes like it should cost twice as much. P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Be sure to listen next week. We're going to announce the winners of Ford Sedans in Parquet's final contest. So you didn't have to go up in the helicopter, huh, Unc? No, Leroy. But I would have gone up. I was all prepared. <laughs> Help me off with this overcoat. It's heavy. Oh, gosh, Unc, you're putting on weight, aren't you? You sure look fatter in this overcoat. Well, Leroy, I wouldn't want you to tell anybody, but there's a parachute back there. <laughs> oh, that parachute. Yeah. Now, let's go eat the turkey. Good night, folks. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry, Adeline Fairchild by Miss Una Merkel. The show was written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Oh? Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Good night, John. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Have you had a hankering for some of that old-fashioned, aged, natural American cheese? Then you'll be glad to know that now, for the first time since before the war, Kraft has plenty of those mellow golden wheels and longhorns. For the past several years, the demand for cheese has been so great that it's been difficult to set aside enough for aging. But now, at long last, Kraft has enough to supply your dealer with all he wants. Ask him for a big wedge cut from a golden wheel of mellow, good, aged, natural American. Just be sure to get the kind that's been carefully aged by the master cheesemakers of Kraft. This is NBC.